This is a game you definitely don't want to miss, as we are talking about a game played in the semi-finals between world's number one Magnus Carlsen and the biggest surprise of the tournament, local hero Nijat Amosov has the tournament of his life. He eliminated top stars like Anish Giri, Laurent Fresinet, Peter Svitler, Fidit, and with that fantastic achievement, he managed to qualify for the candidates event next year. And first things first, we are in the semi-finals. He has the chance to play for the first time in his life with Magnus Carlsen. Let's have a look because this is an absolute thriller of a game. This game has basically all tactics, interesting opening ideas, middle game. So let's dive straight into the action and subscribe to my channel, of course. So Magnus uh, begins here with the move 1e4. We get a Sicilian, knight of three, knight c6. This is what Abosov has played before in the tournament. And as expected, Magnus goes for the move bishop uh, b5. It's the Rosolimo uh, variation, trying to keep a lot of uh, play in the position, rather trying to avoid the uh, sharpest lines in, uh, in the open variation after the move uh, d4. Black goes e6, bishop takes c6, trading of the bishop for the knight, leading to an imbalance uh, in material, but also in pawn structure. Black has a double pawn on the c-file, but who knows, maybe that center will become much uh, more powerful later on. White goes for the move b3, and this move became really popular in the World Championship match um, back in 2012 between uh, Fischi Anand and uh, Boris Gelfand. The idea is that White wants to um, develop its uh, bishop uh, to b2. Black goes for the move d6, and uh, now if you would play bishop b2, the idea is to respond here with e5. And I'm not sure the bishop is very happy. Now the diagonal has been closed, the pawn on e5 is really strong. And uh, black may uh, even count already on an, uh, on an edge. So the idea of white here is to um, tickle the pawn on d6 with a move e5. If this pawn on d6 is gone, then the uh, pawns on the c file will become isolated and more vulnerable later on. So d takes e5 uh, played by Abbasov. And in fact, he had this position in the previous round with Fidit. And Fidit played here the move knight takes e5 and after queen g5, it was a really long game, 109 moves. Eventually the game ended in a draw. It was a good result for uh, for Black. And of course, Magnus had studied it um, in detail on his uh, two rest days. And he decided to introduce a novelty. Rather than capturing the pawn on e5, he plays d3. So it's a pawn sacrifice. Black has two doubled pawns. And of course, these pawns are not really strong. And who knows, maybe at some point one of the pawns can be regained. In any case, Black starts here with f6, strengthening the, the pawn on e5, knight bd2, and now black develops the knight to h6. So that's possible because the knight on d2 is obstructing the bishop on c1, cannot capture that knight. And now the biggest surprise, the real novelty, I would say, is the move rook to g1. Welcome to modern chess. This is something you would probably never come up with your, uh, yourself, but the idea is actually quite logical. You would like to put pressure on that pawn on f6. And uh, if white were allowed to make two more moves, the g pawn will advance to uh, g5, attacking that knight on h6, trying to activate the, the rook from g1. And it's not easy for black at all. What are you going to do with your king? How are you going to develop your bishops? Things are far from uh, clear. And I'm pretty sure uh, Abbasov was caught by a surprise after this uh, innovation. And uh, he decided to play here to move bishop a6. Frankly, in um, in these structures, the bishop is often very badly placed on uh, on a6, biting a granite on, um, on that pawn on uh, d3. So I don't like this move at all. What should be done instead? I think something like uh, queen a5 could seriously be considered with the idea to pin that knight on, uh, on d2. Cannot go to c4. If you would advance the pawn now to g4, continuing with your plan. The, the idea is to strike back with a typical pawn sacrifice. You say, please take my pawn from the c-file. And um, if you take it, you're following up with another pawn sacrifice. You're giving away two pawns and you do it with the aim of activating your, uh, your pieces. You get a rook on the b-file, the bishop can be developed. You can play e5. White's position contains a lot of weaknesses. Of course, you don't have to take the pawn. White can play instead something like g5 and play becomes razor sharp. 
And I'm pretty sure that uh, Magnus, with his team uh, led by uh, his long-term second, uh, Peter Heine Nielsen, they have worked it out uh, pretty much uh, till move 20 or even further. I'm not sure. This is all new. Abasov caught by surprise and play the move bishop a6. So let's have a look what happened now. White continues with g4 as announced. And the knight goes back to uh, f7. White played uh, queen e2, bishop e7, bishop b2, queen a5. So basically the queen is pinning the knight. So the knight cannot uh, move, of course. And you would think that castling queenside is not possible. But after castling queenside, which was not played, pawn on a2 is hanging. The reason I want to show you this is because it has a very original idea. If white is allowed here to play king b1, his position is, positionally speaking, very sound. You, uh, um, you have two knights. Uh, the, of course, the, the center is kind of blocked, but you have a simple plan of advancing your pawns on the king's side, try to create open files, and basically black's bishops are bad. But you're wondering what happens after queen takes a2. I think c4 is a really strong move with the idea to go king c2. Uh, knight on d2 protects the pawn on b3, you're preparing rook a1, and try to prove that the queen is badly placed, black will have to waste uh, quite a bit of time uh, to move the queen, maybe later on the bishop got to move as, uh, as well. I think this is very interesting. However, Magnus decided to start here with the move uh, c4, and I'm not sure that's what you really want to play. In, in general, it's better to keep the pawn on c2, only if black really captures on a2 in the other line, as I showed you. Black played here, g5, radical decision, but very sensible move to prevent white from advancing uh, the g pawn any further. Now the move h4 was played, trying to create an opening there. h6 on the board, trying to keep everything together. And white goes rook h1. The rook has done its job on the g file and uh, is coming back to the h file. Black castled, white does the same. And here again, queen takes a2 would not be a good idea. I will show you why. King c2 can be played, threatening to trap the queen. If the queen goes back, you go rook a1, hit the queen. If the queen goes away, the bishop is under threat, so queen got to stay in touch with the bishop. But now if the bishop c3, you're threatening bishop a5 with a skewer on the queen and rook. You have ideas to double rooks on the a-file with fantastic piece play. I really don't see what uh, black should do, and his position is close to, uh, to be lost. So instead... Of taking the pawn on a2, queen went back to c7. Uh, but here you see also that the bishop on a6 is not very nicely placed here. Knight e4. And uh, of course there's more pressure against the pawn on, uh, on g5. Although everything is still protected. If white were allowed to make one more move, probably queen e3 with the idea to take on c5 is on the agenda. So black played here the move. G takes h4. If you recapture with a rook, well it's f5 with an attack on both the rook and a knight. So that cannot be recommended. Magnus decided to take with a knight, maybe knight g6, attacking the rook and the bishop is uh, on the agenda. Rook h2, g8, and now the move f4 with the idea to put pressure on that pawn on e5 to open the diagonal for the uh, dark squared bishop. e takes f4 was played, now knight takes f6 on the board, bishop protects the knight, and of course you're opening up the e-file for your queen. Bishop takes f6, queen takes e6 with check, king goes to b8, queen takes f6. So if you look at the position, you see that the material is, uh, is even now again, and uh, the pawn on g4 can be taken right away with the rook. But Abbasov says, I can take that pawn anytime. I just want to get back my bishop into play. Maybe you can take with, uh, with the bishop on uh, g4 if you want. Magnus goes rook d2 e1, so he sets up a new threat of playing rook e7, attacking the queen and the knight on f7. Rook d6, attacking the queen. Queen gotta go away, takes the pawn on f4, and now it's rook takes g4. Black hits the queen, so the queen goes back to e3. Many other moves possible as well, but after rook e6, the queen goes back to d2. And I think, even though black's structure is uh, not very nice. White also is having some issues regarding its um, coordination and uh, potentially a lot of pieces are going to get uh, swapped. For instance, rook takes e1 is a possibility. White can't take with the rook because the knight will be hanging. If you take with the queen, maybe queen d6. And I think black is very solid. Instead, the move knight e5 was uh, played. So the knight comes back to the center. 
And here, something like rook e3 would be quite nice to consolidate your position over protecting the pawn on d3. Who knows, there are ideas to get the other rook over to the e-file. But Magnus played here the move king to c2. What should be uh, done here? King d7 was played, but something like rook g3 is a very ambitious move to hit a pawn on d3. It's a very concrete idea. After bishop takes knight, rook takes, you can take the pawn on h6, but after queen d8, there is a lot of pressure against that pawn on d3, against the knight on h4. Well, there are a lot of ideas, and I think white is not having an easy time here at all. King b7 played, of course, Abbasov also has difficulties to work out all the lines. He feels the pressure of playing against the greatest player of all time. Thinks that let's just try to keep everything protected. But now rook e3 is played. Queen to e7. Now the knight is under threat by both the queen and rook. Knight to f5. Queen comes to g5. Attacking that knight on, uh, on f5. Bishop takes e5 was played. And of course, the knight can be taken here. But first, rook g2. Pinning the queen on the second rank. White got to block with its rook. Rook takes e2. Queen takes e2. Queen takes f5. Still, materials even. And you uh, see that the bishop is under threat. It's in a pin. Can't move. If you play rook e1, then the bishop is still very nicely defended. But black will advance the pawn to h5 and there are don't seem to be any problems here whatsoever. I think black is very comfortable and has ideas to advance the pawn even further. Therefore, rook h5 on the board, attacking the queen, indirectly defending the bishop, of course. Now the queen goes to f7. And Magnus thought, okay, it's time to do something about that pin. I would like to move my queen away from the e-file. And what should be done exactly? It's not easy to say. There's no need to do anything. Everything is still nicely protected. White is in control. If you play a move like king c3, you're standing with the king on a dark square. That could be a nice strategy. Even going back with your rook to h1 and maybe go to e1 later, it's possible. But Magnus wants to play for a win. So he moves the queen away. Play the move queen h2. But this is the big moment of the game. Black to play. What can he do? Abbasov played here the move rook g6. But... The engines are screaming out the move queen to f1. The queen comes in to white's position. And all of a sudden, there are huge problems. Because look at this king. It's wide open. The pawn on h6 cannot be taken because of rook takes. Queen takes. And it's queen e2. With a double attack, you're winning the bishop. Of course, the pawn on h6 doesn't have to be captured. But what should be done then instead? For instance, if you, uh, if you move your rook to h4... Well, rook takes e5, queen takes e5 is a nice deflection motive because you have another double attack on the king and rook, winning back the material. Then you think, okay, let's keep everything protected. You keep the queen on the second rank, but that does allow the move rook g6. This is a totally killer move. You're threatening rook g2, winning the queen. If the rook goes back to guard the second rank, you go with your rook to the first rank instead, and you're threatening... A devastating check to enter with your queen and rook. That's going to be game over. Queen f1 would have been a huge opportunity for Abbasov to take the lead in this mini-match. But instead he played rook g6. This is the sort of momentum where he, instead of looking for the killer blow, he wants to keep everything covered, everything protected. But after bishop f4, white consolidates. Rook f6 was played another indecisive move now the bishop comes back to e3 and together with the rook on h5 the pawn on c5 is a new target bishop f5 black activates its bishop bishop takes c5 and here still the position is absolutely far from clear anything can happen with major pieces and opposite color bishops on the board it's more about who has the initiative than about that extra pawn for white queen g6 was played very understandable move, but it's not a good idea because they're followed king to c3. And here Abbasov realized that the pawn on d3 can't be taken. The idea of placing the king on c3 is that black doesn't have any check now. And there is a fantastic shot with the move bishop takes a7, removing a very valuable pawn, threatening to enter with the queen 
on b8 with check and that will lead to checkmate if you take on a7 it's queen c7 with check after king a6 now the rook comes over to a5 to give checkmate together with the queen therefore bishop takes d3 can't be played and you understand that black's previous moves they are absolutely useless rook e6 was played and still bishop takes a7 was a possibility why did magnus not play it i'm not sure let's have a look why what happens after bishop takes pawn if you take the bishop there is queen f2 check this time it's a double attack and after king b7 rook takes f5 white is two pawns up with an initiative with a rook coming to the seventh rank the queen to the seventh rank as well that's leading to checkmate instead of taking the bishop on a7 you can take the pawn on d3 but that allows queen b8 check king a6 queen b6 with checkmate big moment for magnus he also missed his big chance after rook e6 instead he went for the move rook h4 it's a very positional move that you want that your rook is never in touch with the queen again but now the bishop comes to g4 with the idea to play h5 next and then this rook on h4 seems to be out of play if you play queen f4 with the idea to get the rook back into the game white's advantage is still pretty obvious but instead magnus decided to take now the pawn on a7 this is very tempting of course with the idea that if you take it's queen to g1 with a double attack you're uh, hitting the king followed by uh, rook takes g4 this is winning the line is actually even a little deeper after c5 it's rook takes g4 attack the queen if queen f6 check the king gotta go back and then the rook comes into e2 looks incredibly dangerous but after king d1 everything is under control because you're attacking the rook if black does something about it let's say queen b2 with devastating mating threats white is first to play queen takes c5 with check the black king is open next the rook will come with check white is winning so the bishop can't be taken but what should be done instead abasov played the move queen f6 but the correct move is queen to g7 with check similar to queen f6 but you're keeping your bishop defended for instance if you play now the move d4 this is the moment to capture the bishop on a7 the only thing white can do in that case is give up the rook for the bishop rook takes queen takes queen c7 and after king a8 queen c8 it's going to be a repetition of move moves you um you have no time no possibility to take on e6 because the queen still defends its own uh, rook so that's very interesting line queen g7 with the idea to guard the seventh rank as well as your bishop on g4 would have saved the uh, game for black instead queen f6 was on the board and magnus he had a walk he came back to the board and realized that he was winning because he had calculated it all of course you don't play here the move king c2 because it runs into rook e2 with a double attack you're losing your queen but instead of going backwards the king goes for its own adventure it goes to b4 and that is a big big move still the bishop on a7 can't really be taken because of queen t queen c7 check king goes away and then you take on g4 followed by rook g8 with mate to come other possibilities for instance queen e7 check can now be met by bishop to c5 you save your bishop with a counterattack against the queen that's not gonna work in the game abasov play the move rook to e5 closing the diagonal preventing white from placing its queen on uh, on b8 and well a simple move would be just to take on g4 and take it from there white is winning but magnus had a very elegant idea instead of capturing the bishop he created an even stronger threat by playing the move d4 hitting the rook now if the rook goes away we have this idea of playing queen b8 with uh, with may to come therefore queen e7 was played now bishop c5 is a reasonable move but even nicer is to keep that bishop on a7 so with a move c5 your king is no longer in check the rook is hanging if the rook goes away it's queen b8 with check king a6 queen b6 with mate um, on, on b6 so that is a beautiful line it also shows that black is going to lose material as everything is simply hanging here so after c5 black resigned this was an absolute roller coaster of a game and magnus admitted afterwards that he was incredibly nervous during the game also he didn't know what was happening of course abasov had his own chances as well but 
it should be said that this big moment where Queen F1 could have been played by Black, it was not taken seriously by Magnus at all. Apparently, this was a very difficult move to find. Maybe not the move itself, but the idea to get your rook over to the G-file and set up a battery together with the Queen, that was hard to find, probably with the players being low on time. Anyway, Magnus Carlsen takes the lead. He's just a draw away from reaching the final, and let's see if he can make his uh, dream come true.